so what happens when you want the ground clearance of the Subaru Forester, but you still fancy the practicality of the legacy wagon. The car that will actually hit your sweet spot will be called the Subaru Outback. I'm glad that we're back to 0 to 6 motoring for another car episode. My name is Bill Sio Tour and I'm shooting this Subaru Outback review from Nyamira County which also happens to be my home. So I'm promising you a detailed and in-depth review of this 2016 Subaru Outback BS series. So stick around or hang around until the end of this video if you want to learn more about the 2016 Subaru Outback BS9. Before I, get, I carry on with this review, let me give you a little bit of information about 0 to 6 motoring. 0 to 6 motoring is a tried and tested platform that uh, makes your car ownership journey easy. We basically give you information about cars, we, in, we scout for you cars, we inspect them and then we make your car ownership journey easy. So if you want to purchase a car, shoot us a message or ring us on the number below and then we are going to make your car ownership journey easy. Alright, here we go, 2016 a Subaru Outback BS9 review. A few weeks ago I filmed a 2016 a Subaru Outback 3.6R but uh, because of technicalities, technical hitches, that video actually doesn't have an audio. That is the problem with it. But worry not if uh, you've been looking for an Outback review because this video is going to equip you with uh, information about uh, the 2016 uh, Subaru Outback and whether it's value for money or whether you should purchase it ahead of the competitors. In Kenya, the Subaru Outback is one of the most feared cars because our state agents, agencies are normally use them. Most probably if you normally follow political news or watch political content, most probably you must have seen the Subaru Outback in the entry range of Land Cruisers that is for politicians. So this car has the capability to keep up with Land Cruiser, that's why most probably it's finding its way there. So what exactly is the Subaru Outback? The Subaru Outback is uh, built or was uh, started as a Subaru Legacy but uh, with uh, in enhanced ground clearance. So basically it is a long wagon but uh, with the ground clearance of a uh, crossover. That is, uh, that is the simplest way to describe uh, the Subaru Outback. Because when you're looking at the Subaru Outback, let not the long body fool you. The Subaru Outback actually has similar ground clearance as the Subaru Forester. It's only that it's longer and uh, the sitting position is not elevated uh, as elevated as a Subaru Forester. That's why most probably you may think that uh, this car sits to the ground. But I want to give you some uh, little assignment. Eh? If uh, you are doubting that uh, the Subaru Outback uh, ground clearance is not as similar as a Subaru Forester, I want you to take a rule and walk into a car dealership and measure the two cars. So when I'm looking at the Subaru Outback, uh, this car doesn't have a direct competitor because it is a wagon that uh, has uh, the ground clearance of a Forester. So it's like uh, you're trying to blend together two cars. That's why this car will not have a direct competitor. What, what can actually come near this car, but it's not that popular, is called the Audi All-Road, uh, the 4 All-Road. I played with that car, it's uh, one kind of hell of a car, but still it's not as popular as the Outback. So in Kenya I'll say that the Outback doesn't have a direct competitor. It's, uh, it's kind of unique in its uh, own segment. But now because uh, most probably someone will be wanting to know what uh, cars will be kind of alternatives, I look at the price tag. The price tag of the 2016 uh, Subaru Outback uh, BS9, which is a good trim level with a good grade, will be around 3 million shillings, uh, 3.2, 3.3 thereabouts. So when you are looking at the 3.2, 3.3 million, they are about uh, the, the price tag. The cars that can actually come in as substitutes, not necessarily, they may not offer the practicality of the wagon, but the nearest substitutes will be kind of something like uh, it's a sibling, that is the Subaru Forester SJ series, something like uh, the Mazda CX-5, maybe the Mitsubishi Outlander, and something like uh, the Honda CRV. Even the, from the inquiries we get, most people will be trying to compare the Outback and the Forester, they'll be trying to compare the Outback with the CX-5, CRV and something like uh, the Outlander. So the Outback doesn't have a competitor basically because of its uh, body design and uh, it's, it's, it's like two cars in one basically let me put it that way. This generation of the Subaru Outback, this uh, BS series looks more mature and uh, more solid in terms of design. It's actually grown from the previous generation that is the BR series. I'm not a big fan of the BR series uh, Subaru Outback because uh, actually I think uh, it's uh, one of the worst generation of the Subaru Outback because it looked odd and it looks uh, more like a Subaru Legacy. But when you're looking at this one, this one looks uh, more solid and uh, more refined. I'm actually a big fan of the previous version of the Subaru Outback, that is the, the BP series. But uh, this one is now a whole different game. So for the previous uh, BR series, uh, 
it's not my cup of tea and i know very many people don't like uh, that br series bit that was a car the generation between uh, 2009 to around 20 uh, late 2014 thereabouts but uh, for the previous B bp series it was actually a very solid ride there is a car i like uh, it's called a bph it has a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine and it's a car i'm uh, really looking forward to owning in the near future and now speaking of that uh, 2.5 liter turbocharged motor that takes me straight into the engine options eh? so for this uh, generation uh, this 2015 uh, subaru road back there are three engine uh, choices and I've, uh, i'm lucky that i've already interacted with all of them the most common engine is uh, called uh, the fb25 it's a four cylinder horizontally opposed uh, uh 2.5 liter natural aspirated petrol engine and that is the most common engine very many people are going to get and that is actually the variant i'm driving eh? a few weeks ago of course i placed my hands on a 3.6 liter that is a six cylinder subaru outback uh, uh it's called a 3.6 r and then previously i've also played with a turbocharged a diesel of course uh, it's a car that i like that to some extent but i'm going to reserve my comments about that uh, diesel flavor because it also has uh, its own share share of uh, issues so for this a uh, 2.5 liter uh, fb25 engine it's a married to a cvt gearbox uh, which actually sends drive to all the four wheels of this car via subaru's uh, legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system so these are for these are 2.5 liter actually there is no manual transmission for this car so, but at least this car has these paddle shifters uh, here on the steering wheel so if uh, you like taking matters into your own hands this car has a uh, six the uh, six are uh, programmed ratios of course if you want to mimic a uh, manual transmission option even for the 3.6 r it only comes with a cvt gearbox but of course uh, this cvt gearbox is not uh, is not as what you'll be finding in the rivals but i'll be cap coming into the driving uh, dynamics of the subaru outback in a few moments for those people who don't know all subarus are uh, all uh, subaru outbacks actually they come with a standard all-wheel drive system uh, there is no two-wheel drive a subaru outback just like it's a younger sibling that is the subaru forester so how does the subaru outback drive eh? when you're looking at the subaru outback uh, you can actually realize that it's a big car so basically it's a problem parking at the subaru road back in tight spots or in places or maybe where the pillars are somewhat close to each other but at least this car has a reversing camera and it also has a it has a parking sensors of course i don't have a problem parking this car because i also have a long car but uh, for first time car buyers uh, or first time users it may actually be become problematic now the steering wheel of this uh, Subaru Roadback is very light and I like it uh, this way it has a very good uh, response let me say it's a uh, dead accurate actually at uh, the sitting position uh, it's uh, good I have a very good uh, visibility of the road ahead of me and of course with these uh, seats are uh, being electronically adjusted I'm easily finding my sitting position actually now in terms of a power delivery up front I have a 2.5 liter natural aspirated petrol engine four cylinder it's called a boxer engine actually because of uh, the way of uh, its engineering the power rating of these are uh, 2.5 liter is around uh, 175 horse per horses and uh, 245 newton meters of torque now when you're looking at those numbers and the size of these are uh, super hot back of course those numbers uh, may not uh, necessarily translate to something that uh, has mind blowing or, or uh, electric fang performance but uh, it's still sufficient uh, for day-to-day -day operations and still for those people who have not uh, driven at uh, the 3.6 hour of which a uh, majority of uh, of uh, people have not interacted with it most probably they are going to be uh, sufficiently catered for with uh, these uh, 2.5 liter motor this car has a cvt gearbox and i'm pretty sure majority of you have uh, had horror stories about uh, the driving uh, the driving impression of a car with a cvt gearbox now from my standpoint i've played with a gazillion of cars with the cvt gearbox and i can tell you for free that uh, subaru is the only brand that uh, makes one of the best uh, cvt gearbox in terms of a uh, drivability of course i'm not saying that it's better than a convention automatic but when i'm comparing to other cvts for example for this outback it's tuned better than what something like uh, the Nix nissan x rail has or uh, something like uh, the mitsubishi outlander and then uh, these are uh, cvt gearbox what i've learned with this uh, car is it doesn't like uh, being pushed it's normally it's, it needs let me say somewhat like a uh, preparations eh? you don't just uh, pick an outback jump into it and then uh, you want to press it or pin it immediately 
you have to prepare it eh? because if uh, you hop into the car you fire it up uh, you step and or you pin the accelerator that way while uh, the, the the car will still uh, perform or behave it will actually bring out some uh, loud cvt moans which also means uh, some bad news uh, for the lifespan of your gearbox so for these uh, cvt gearbox what i've learned with it it's better given time for it uh, to accelerate or for, give, for it to do its uh, job, job uh, pretty well. So the CVT gearbox here, of course, uh, it's not a good gearbox per se compared uh, to something like uh, the 8-speed as a dev series in uh, cars like uh, the BMW X3. But when you're looking at uh, Japanese rivals uh, which are utilizing a CVT gearbox, I think it's better for day-to-day uh, -day operation. It's tuned better for drivability. The Subaru Outback has uh, three driving modes basically. You have uh, the intelligent mode which is, uh, is for normal driving, you have a sports mode and then you have a sports shop. Of course I like uh, driving uh, the car in uh, sports mode but uh, the car still feels uh, pretty good or solid at uh, intelligent mode especially for day to day operations. Eh? Of course there is a liability that comes about when uh, you are uh, constant, uh, you, you drive on sports mode as uh, someone like me, of course I'll be coming into that uh, in a short while. But then. When you put the car into sports mode, it tends to become actually more, more of a, more responsive. Eh? And if you are wondering why I'm actually leaving the steering wheel, this car has a lane departure warning system. So it actually tends to remain within its lens. It's only that uh, the corners here are actually very sharp and uh, sometimes uh, they can exit the car's capability to keep itself uh, in the lens. Eh? Now, when uh, you are comparing uh, the drivability of these uh, 2.5 liter versus the 3.6R, it's something I'm pretty sure most of you want to know because I've already interacted with the 3.6R. Well, the 3.6R makes uh, close to 250 horses and uh, 350 newton meters of torque. And I can tell you for free, that is one kind of hell of a car, especially in terms of acceleration. Because the acceleration of that car from a standstill to 100 kilometers per hour is around 7 point something seconds. Eh? Because it can actually keep up or it, it actually beats the Subaru Forest XT in terms of acceleration. Because in that car there is no turbo lag. But for this one, the 0 to 100 time, of course I cannot be able to test it uh, because this road is uh, kind of winding. But uh, it should be around 9 point something, km, 9 point something seconds. Eh? So th that tells you that uh, this will be somewhat sl slower than the, than, uh, than the 3.6 uh, liter. But still, for day-to-day -day operations, I don't think that uh, the average buyer is going to find uh, the 2.5 liter that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, lacking in power. Because I feel like it's sufficient for the average person. Actually, majority of the people on Kenyan roads, they're driving cars. Uh, which have uh, an engine displacement of uh, below 2000 cc so anything above 2000 cc just like this one which is a 2.5 liter it's going to be perfectly okay for many drivers because uh, there is also an element of fuel consumption the symmetrical all-wheel drive system of subarus is uh, one of the best i've seen actually i normally rate it uh, kind of similar to what uh, audi has that is the quattro in audi because now for example something like this a uh, subaru outback the all-wheel drive system works in such a manner that it sends power to the wheel with the most traction. Basically, the wheel that needs, uh, the wheel that has the most need for that uh, power. So that way, you can actually never run short of traction. That is of the symmetrical all-wheel drive system. Now, speaking of uh, having uh, the best traction at all times, that takes me to another another important element. When you're looking at the ground clearance of this car, which is uh, similar to a Subaru Forest, and uh, you are having a uh, constant all-wheel drive system that actually make, uh, makes uh, the Subaru Outback one of the best cars you can have if you want something that can actually do slight off-roading because this car can actually go somewhere where a Land Cruiser can go basically all you need to do is to install uh, all-terrain tires and uh, then uh, this car will actually find it find its way there actually for that uh, 3.6 liter R I tried to off-road it uh, slightly of course what I did was uh, kind of awkward I put the car into manual mode and then and then I hold uh, used uh, used uh, the paddle shifters and I uh, used the fast ratio. So that way I was actually trying to simulate something like a low range gear. And the car actually made it uh, somewhere deep alongside uh, something like a Mitsubishi Pajero Sports and a Toyota Fortuna. So when I'm looking at the off-roading uh, acumen of the Subaru Outback, it's something that you can really trust to get you into the forest and most importantly once you put it into x mode the car can actually get you back home 
taifa once the subaru out back actually gather speeds you can actually tell that it's a stable car because it's it feels heavy and it's a sure footed and uh, it's uh let me say it's solid to the road because you don't feel like it's about to get out of the road eh? this this road has uh, some winding corners but i can be able to do some uh, 80 kilometers per hour comfortably sometimes to 110 120 kilometers per, per per hour of course i like i also like uh, the braking system of this uh, super road back because it's a uh, little bit sharp to my liking of course and it makes a um, it makes a stopping an easy task now of course uh, this car is a better driven in sports mode than intelligent mode because under sports mode you actually have very good uh, let me say responsiveness of this a uh, 2.5 liter motor of course uh, driving it in, in in sports mode of course comes uh, with uh, some reliability of course i'll be getting into that shortly but uh, when i'm trying to gun this car it's actually behaving pretty well because i'm now doing uh, this uh, inclination at um, RK is per hour, but it doesn't feel like it's struggling and it's it's doing it actually in intelligent mode so basically that tells you that uh, even in intelligent mode the Subaru Outback never feels short of, short of power of course I for me I like uh, to drive it in uh, sports mode but uh, for the average buyer there is no reason whatsoever why you should uh, drive uh, the Subaru Outback in sports mode unless and otherwise maybe when uh, you want uh, that overtaking a uh, grant uh, when I'm trying uh, to gun this car into corners, of course there is uh, some uh, body roll because this is uh, more raced than a Subaru Legacy. Of course that is now where your physics, uh, your knowledge of physics uh, actually comes into play. Something that is uh, somewhat raised of course will actually tag along some body roll. But when I'm looking at the body roll of this car versus something like a Subaru Forest or another crossover, the body roll here is actually smaller because this car is uh, longer and basically from a uh, basic physics you now you can actually tell why a longer car ha, is more stable or has less body roll compared to a shorter car with the same ground clearance so that's why most probably if uh, you hope into or if uh, you've been driving a subaru forester or a, a crossover a honda crv and uh, you step into a subaru road back you are going to like its handling especially at high speeds it feels are uh, more composed and are uh, more stable because it's longer and it, it is actually a little bit uh, heavier another thing when you're trying to look at uh, the engineering of this car especially the engine subaru have mastered the art of uh, trying to keep their engine uh, somewhat lower than uh, what uh, how many how other automakers will be placing their engines so the flat four horizontally opposed engine is uh, placed somewhat lower there by lowering uh, the center of gravity or cog in uh, in, uh, in abbreviation eh? and uh, with a lower cog that means that, uh, that the car will be more stable when now when you're looking at the design of this car and a flat four engine that is a placed placed somewhat lower than it will be found in other cars th those are the ingredients that actually make this car more stable or uh, handle more maturely than a traditional crossover So if I was to purchase a Subaru Outback, definitely I'll uh, try to look uh, for a 3.6R because it's a Kai. Once uh, you drive it, uh, you don't want to hop into another Japanese crossover. But that car is a heavy drink, especially in traffic, because I was seeing uh, figures uh, close to 7 point something, 8 kilometers per liter. Of course, the manufacturer will be quoting more figures, uh, higher figures than those ones. But I'll say those are ambitious figures. I don't expect anything close to... The manufacturer costs, costs like 10 kilometers per liter, but don't expect that. Now, speaking of fuel consumption, now let me tell you the fuel consumption of this car. The average of fuel figure of uh, this car will be around 9.5 to 10.5 kilometers per liter. Of course, it boils down to the driving uh, behavior of the person uh, behind the wheel. But for a person like me, sometimes uh, I can record lower figures than an even 9.5 kilometers per liter. Basically, it's because I spend more time in uh, sports mode and then i i think i'm like uh, i have a lead foot let me place it that way but of course i've seen uh, other people say they no they normally register higher figures than uh, 10.5 kilometers per liter but uh, you have to be extremely disciplined and then uh, you have to leave the car in uh, intelligent mode and then you have to leave the car to do its job that is the only way you're going to get a uh, better fuel figures So let's talk something about uh, the design of this uh, Subaru Outback BS9. Now when you're looking at this car, you can actually tell why I was saying that uh, these are more mature and uh, let me say it's a uh, bold and masculine in terms of design compared to the predecessor that is the BR series. Uh, this car actually on the side profile comes with these. Uh, these are actually 18 inch alloy wheels and then when you're looking at the ground clearance of this car, 
you actually have like 21 centimeters of ground clearance now when you're looking at 21 centimeters of ground clearance that is more ground clearance than actually some what uh, actually some crossovers will give you so that tells you why this car will not be having a problem when it comes to actually off-roading now this is how the front of this car looks like of course this grill is not as common as uh, what you'll be finding in other cars but uh, this grill uh, from my standpoint actually looks better under the the other version of the grill it normally fades or actually looks uh, really bad especially when the car starts aging eh? when you're looking at this car from uh, the rear profile you have this uh, uh, spoiler here and then you have this asymmetrical awd of course to tell you that this car has a full-time all-wheel drive system you have this uh, outback badge here so now you can actually tell that uh, this car is a uh, is really grown from the previous generation now speaking of uh, the grow the growth let me show you how the super road box looks like in terms of the spacing element uh, this boot it is actually electronically operated because it actually has a a memory function you can actually set this boot to the height with which you will want now this is how the boot space of this uh, super road back looks like and you can actually tell that uh, it's one of uh, the most uh, spacious boots are uh, most probably you've ever seen and then uh, when uh, you drop these uh, seats down you're going to have a uh, like a uh, pickup like a uh, space so that's why i was actually saying that uh, the subaru outback actually has tons of space now in terms of the design of this uh, subaru outback uh, this trim actually is uh, quite loaded with a bunch of features because it comes with these uh, electronically adjusted seats of course uh, you, you easily find your driving position and uh, these seats actually have a memory function that's why you can see here set one or two basically they help you locating your driving position other features in this car include a memory height uh, boot you have a um, a rear vehicle monitoring system here you have a lane departure warning system a collision mitigation system courtesy of the subaru eyesight system you have a traction control system and then on the steering wheel you have a cruise control button here and then you have this lane assist and then you have the sports and the sports mode driving uh, the sports driving modes well, when you're looking at the cabin uh, styling of this car of course it's not uh, let me say it's not uh, like a uh, fancy like a european car but you can tell that uh, this car is uh, quite loaded you have a hill descent control button down here under the x mode here. of course you use this one for off-roading purposes the electric uh, the handbrake here of course is electric and that is how actually you operate it So there is another question I want to answer in this review. I cannot, I can, actually I cannot keep up with the number of requests I normally get to compare this uh, Subaru Outback and its Subaru Forester. So let me just uh, give uh, my thoughts about uh, the Subaru Outback because I've already reviewed the Subaru Forester. It's uh, prudent that I give uh, my comparison uh, using uh, this uh, Subaru Outback. Now, given the two, the Subaru Outback and the Subaru Forester, I'm placing my corner, I'm choosing uh, the Subaru Outback. The reasoning is pretty simple. Now, when I'm looking at the Subaru Forester, now let me use uh, something like uh, the Subaru Forester XT, that is the SJG, versus this one, the 2.5 liter here. Of course, the SJG has a better acceleration than uh, this uh, 2.5 liter here. But uh, once uh, you have already accelerated and, and uh, maybe you're at speeds above 100 kilometers per hour, this car feels more stable. So at that point, I don't feel like I'm going to miss that power in the Subaru Forester. Another thing, when I'm looking at the reliability of these uh, 2.5 liter FB25 or the Subaru Outback generally versus uh, the Subaru Forester, I think uh, these uh, FB25 has uh, more life or uh, it's easier to live with compared to the FA20 in the Subaru Forester XT. Now, mo someone can also be interested in the comparison of these uh, Subaru Outback BS9 versus something uh, like uh, the Subaru Forester SJ5 because these days these things are actually priced uh, similarly. To be honest, there is no single day that a Subaru Forest SJ5 uh, can outgun or outperform a Subaru Outback in whatever dimension you look at it, unless and others you're looking at a fuel consumption because the FB25 uh, engineer is solid and it is more responsive on the road than uh, the gutless uh, FB20 in the Subaru Forest SJ5. The Outback is more stable, it's bigger, it's more practical. So from my standpoint, uh, the outback is a more solid option uh, than uh, the subaru forester so that is actually i'll compare the three cars uh, the three cars yes uh, the 2.5 liter subaru outback 
the two liter turbo charged uh, Forester and the two liter non turbo Forester. I think uh, the Subaru Roadback uh, will be uh, an easier car to live with in the, in the long term. Of course, it consumes more fuel than the Subaru Forester ST5, but the fuel consumption of this car is kind of similar to what I was getting in the Subaru Forest SJG. So if uh, you don't want that electrifying takeoff from the Subaru Forest SJ, from the Subaru Forest XT, then uh, you can actually live pretty well with this uh, Subaru Outback 2.5 liter. Now, if uh, you try to bring uh, the Subaru Outback a 3.6R in the mix, of course, I don't think uh, there is a Subaru Forest in the SJ series that uh, can compete with that car because that car has uh, literally everything. Uh, if uh, you don't have a problem with uh, becoming more familiar or, uh, or uh, frequenting uh, the fuel pump or gas station, then uh, the 3.6 liter Subaru Outback is the car to get. That is, uh, I'll actually try to analyze that uh, 3.6 liter Subaru Outback, but still, for a person who is stuck between uh, the Subaru Forest, uh, whether it's the XT or uh, the SJ5, and then uh, this Nantaribo, and these are uh, 2.5 liter Outback, I'll still uh, advise them uh, to pick uh, this uh, 2.5 liter Outback. It's a more solid car, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna live longer than uh, most of those uh, FA20 uh, Subaru Foresters. Now, how does the Subaru Outback look like in terms of reliability? That is something uh, a buyer will be interested in. What you are looking here is uh, an engine called the F FB25 2.5 litre engine. Eh? Now, when I'm looking at this engine, it's an engine that I'll say doesn't have many issues. It's something that normally survives a routine maintenance. Eh? This car comes with a CVT gearbox. Now, CVT gearbox are not uh, the best gearboxes, especially in terms of reliability. Because from my standpoint, I have actually quite a number of complaints uh, of uh, CVT gearboxes uh, for Subarus. Actually, majority of them are for the Subaru Forester. Of course, uh, there is uh, at some point uh, someone messaged me that uh, the Subaru Outback gearbox had failed and the replacement was actually in the north of uh, 300,000. So for the Subaru Outback, uh, the only major thing that can actually go wrong is the gearbox and sometimes uh, the electronic power steering rack may also misbehave. So those are the things that can actually go wrong. But w this car you're looking here actually has a mileage of around 212,000 kilometers and uh, it still drives like new. It's in an immaculate condition. So basically tells, that tells you that if you give your car the right treatment, it's going actually to survive pretty well. So from my standpoint, a naturally aspirated petrol engine cannot uh, literally doesn't have uh, any problem from my standpoint. So, should you buy the Subaru Outback? From my standpoint, if you want a car that uh, blends the practicality of a wagon and has the ground clearance of a crossover, there is no reason whatsoever why you should not purchase a Subaru Outback. I'm actually advising a 2.5 liter because you, can, you cannot get a 3.6 uh, with ease and of course when you get the 3.6 R it's normally expensive. Eh? So if you want a crossover, with the capability of a wagon something that is a really special it's a it has a good off-roading acumen or proviso uh, the interior is good the boot space is that massive you can actually sleep in this car at a unesa mission to with this uh, super hot back then uh, i don't see the problem why you should not get uh, this car because when i'm looking even at reliability this car has a 219 kilometers or uh, 219,000 kilometers on the clock but it still drives like new it's in, in, in an immaculate condition so that tells you that if you really take care of something well it can actually last so from my standpoint there is no reason whatsoever why you should not purchase a super hot back that is if you can meet its price tag and you can be able to live with a 10 kilometers per liter or sometimes to 9.5 kilometers per liter if you are into enthusiastic driving or aggressive driving something i really discourage I think uh, you have now learned a thing or two about uh, these are uh, 2015 uh, 2016 uh, Subaru Outback BS9. If you have any other question, uh, any question regarding this car, that is the Subaru Outback uh, 2.5 liter or even the 3.6R. And in case there is something uh, we left out, uh, you can also shoot me a message and then uh, I am going to clarify it because a 20 minute review cannot actually cover everything you want to know about a car. Remember to subscribe to this channel, that is the only way you can actually help this channel grow. Alright, I'll see you on the next one on 0 to 60 motoring. Bye for now.